Do you have a paint project ready to start? Watch this video first. Hello everybody, I'm Courtney from All Things New Again in Leesburg, Virginia. And we are getting ready to start, well we've already started, um, a new paint project. There's a lot that goes into a project before you even touch it with a paintbrush. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to answer all of your questions about prepping a piece, cleaning it, sanding it, priming it, when do you need to do this, when do you not, and um, what are some basic products and tools that you need to get started, and, and what are a little bit better tools you need, um, and, and how you can make your paint project turn out the best that you can make it. So that is what this video is about today. So thank you everyone for joining us. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. My dad will shout them out and I'll be happy to answer them. Um, we just wanted to do a really basic video to get you started on the right foot um, with your next paint project. So this is the project we're working on here. This is a custom order. This desk um, belonged to our customer from when she was a, a little kid. This is, was like her childhood bedroom furniture. She's kept it all these years. She loved it, but it needed a little bit of updating. And maybe you have a piece in your home that, you know, it's been with you a while, you really love it, but you know, it could look better, it could be freshened up a little bit, maybe it doesn't fit your current style or your current color scheme. Um, you can definitely um, update it and make it perfect for where you are right now, and it, it, it's pretty easy to do. We'll show you how to do it. So, I'm going to walk you through kind of what we've done so far on this piece and why and help you apply that information to your project. So um, we started out by sanding the tabletop here and I will tell you why. So we use Dixie Bell paint. It's no VOC chalk mineral paint. We sell it here at the shop. We sell it on our website allthingsnewagain.net and we love this paint because it sticks really nicely to furniture, um, to home decor. I mean we paint all kinds of things with this paint and it sticks but it's only going to look as good as as the canvas that you start with and in this case the blank canvas is this desk. So the desk had like um it had been worn it had like a well how would you describe it that kind of like a bumpiness or a roughness to it would you say? The grain had come up the grain has come up over the years, and what that means is you see all this grain, it feels smooth now, but it had felt like, you could feel like little ridges where that grain was coming through. Nap. Nap? That's what they call it. Oh. Well, That's then. not what I've been doing. <laughs> you mean sleeping. <laughs> grain that raises call a nap. Oh, the well grain. there you go. I didn't even know that. Um, sometimes the old finish will start to flake off over the years. If you paint over that old flaky finish, if you paint over that nap, the paint will stick, but it's not going to look good. It's not going to feel good because you have all that texture underneath where you want a smooth surface on a piece like this. So you need to sand. You're not sanding it to make the paint stick. You're made sanding it to make the paint look good. Um, if you have any sort of scratches or gouges and you paint over it, it's going to look like you painted over a scratch or a gouge. You're still going to see that damage. So if you want a smooth finish, you need to start with a smooth surface. So in this instance, my dad, did you have a question? I have a comment. Oh, sure. Another reason that we sanded this is because it did have a finish on it and part of it was not worn away. So we had a dull surface and a shiny surface all in the same piece due to its age. So we took off all the shine as well. So we took off all the shine and taking off the shine helps your paint stick better. You have a super glossy surface. There's things you can do to make your paint stick better. One of them is sanding it. Um, this is just a little palm sander we use. I have a little called a mouth sander at home that I like. The mouth is shaped like an iron, like you would iron your clothes with. It's got a point at the top. I like my mouse because it's very lightweight and I can use it with one hand. Um, this one's a little bit heavier, but it's got this nice little dust catcher. Do you find that that works well? Reasonably well, yes. Mine mine popped off and it's like, I don't even know where it is now. I, I, <laughs> All my dust is out of me. I do find that I don't empty it as often as I should. Oh, <laughs> that's, yeah. a, that's key. <laughs> but if you're, if you're going to spend the money on a sander, it's something to think about. Um, it does cut down a little bit, not 100%, but um, 
think about how you'll use it. Um, for me, I like the lightweightness because it's easier for me to, to use, but this one is not super heavy either. Um, if you're going to get into painting a lot of furniture, I would recommend investing in a little sander. I don't have a favorite brand or anything, but just get something that feels good in your hand. Like go to the hardware store and, and pick it up and hold it. Because if you're painting furniture, you're going to be sanding furniture. Just because you need to on a lot of pieces, not everything, but on a lot of pieces, you're going to need to sand it down to give you that smooth surface to start with, to give you that blank canvas so that when you start laying your paint down, it's going to look beautiful and feel beautiful. Let me show you another thing here. You notice we didn't sand it all the way. Um, how do you know if you've sanded it enough and you close your eyes and you feel it? Like if, if my eyes were closed, I wouldn't be able to tell where this part with the finish is or where we have it down to bare wood because, and my dad sanded this one for us. He gave us a head start on this piece by doing that work because it feels smooth. If you feel any sort of um, dip or scratch, if you can feel that, you're going to see it. So um, close your eyes and just run your hands over the piece and that will give you a lot of information on, on how much you need to prep. Um, so if it feels rough or if there feels like any sort of indentations or anything, you're going to need to sand it until it feels smooth. So that's sanding. It's not necessarily because you need to get the paint to stick, although if you have a super glossy surface, it helps the paint stick better to get the, get the shine off. You don't need to get it down to bare wood, but to get the shine off. Um, and again, just close your eyes and rub your hands over it and feel. If it feels good, it's going to look good. So that's um, kind of our recommendation on sanding. It's a piece by piece kind of thing. I don't sand everything down. Do you sand everything, Denny? No. Nope. Uh, in fact, if I can get away with not sanding, I won't because I don't enjoy <laughs> That's not like a part of this process that I enjoy. <laughs> Dishwashing detergent, right? Um, 
that will cut through anything. And that's what we used on this piece because it's a custom piece. We want to make sure it's like extra good. And, you know, we use the TSP, the white lightning in it. You mix it with warm water. You wash it really well. You wear gloves. And then you have to rinse it really well. So whatever product you use, whether it's just the Dawn dish soap or you use the white lightning, you need to rinse it really well. Rinse it again. Rinse it one more time for good measure. Because like all the little, the greasiness or like the uh, furniture polish that builds up, the soap will, will be a barrier as well. So you need to make sure you rinse it really well. Um, that is probably the most important step in any furniture project is cleaning your piece really well, making sure you have a really nice surface to start with. Um, sometimes I skip the sanding, sometimes I skip the boss, which we'll talk about in depth next, but you can never skip cleaning. Even if it looks clean, like, oh, it's just been in my living room all these years, it's clean, you need to scrub it really well anyway to get any little fingerprints or any sort of cleaning product from before off of it. So that's non-negotiable. The cleaning's gotta be done. Sometimes, like we get furniture from all over the place. Sometimes it takes longer to clean the piece than it does to actually get your base coat of paint on because you gotta do it again and again until your water runs clean. Um, if you're rinsing it off and the water's still real dirty, dump it out, get a fresh batch and rinse it off again um, until you get it really clean. Some pieces your water will never come clean and that's when the boss comes in. So like darker woods, your mahoganies, your cherries, those pieces are what we call bleeders, right? Sounds kind of gross. But bleed through is a phenomenon where the tannins in the wood come through your paint. And it's typically seen when you paint lighter colors. We're painting this deck white. We're painting it fluff from Dixie Belle. Um, if this was like a dark cherry, it would definitely be fluff. Um, sometimes the old stains will come through. So if you disturb the surface, you run the risk of bleed through. And here's a good example of it right here. We sanded off part of the old finish, but not all of it down to bare wood. So if we were just to paint this white, we run the risk. Probably not with the lighter color, but if it was like when the reddish colors would, you would get like a pink stain coming through, shaped exactly like the little island that you sanded off. So you need to block that from coming through. And this is a really good product to use. It's called the Boss. Again, it blocks odors and stains and stops bleed through. So if you have a stinky piece, you want to put Boss on it to block the odors. Like sometimes the drawers need freshening up. That's not the case with this piece. Um, but it'll stop the stains from coming through. And you can see the difference. This desk was white, but it's old. Things become discolored over time. And, and you want to try to prevent that as possible. Here's a coat of paint on it with the white fluff. You can see the difference. Um, and that's just from time. So we put a coat of boss over this entire, well, two coats, right, Mom? Over this entire desk to prevent that discoloration from coming through our, our fresh new white paint job. And that's what we use the boss for. Now it comes in clear and it comes in white. And they both do the same thing. But why would you choose clear or white one over the other? And we use clear, we, I say we, my mom did all the prep work on this. <laughs> um, she chose clear because our client wants to distress this piece. She likes that old wood and it's really, it's gonna look really lovely. But so we, we wanted to be able to get a little bit of that blonde wood coming through the white white. It's gonna give it a little contrast and, um, and kind of accentuate all these pretty detail work around it. So the boss that was used is the clear boss. It looks white in the jar, but it dries clear and it will provide that barrier so that the stains don't come through, but it will um, not change the color. So if you want it to distress the, the original wood will come through. So I hope that makes sense. Um, I don't have a preference for one or the other. If you're doing like the inside of drawers just to freshen up the smell and it's like already been painted or something, the clear is lovely for that. Um, the white is nice if you're going from a really dark wood to a lighter color. It just gives you like an extra layer 
um, you're putting white on top of white and not white on white paint on top of white and not white paint on top of like the dark wood, which would take a couple more coats to fully cover. So those are just some questions to ask yourself. Um, what is the surface you're starting with? Do you think it's one of those woods that might bleed, which are typically your darker or your reddish woods? Or is there is the original finish disturbed in some way where I might get patches um, of like where you see the edges around it through my light colored paint? If we were gonna paint this black, I wouldn't even worry about it. Dark gray, you typically don't see bleed through in the darker colors. It's typically only coming through the lighter colors. Um, and that's when we really pay attention and, and take the time to um, put that extra step into our prep work so that our finished product looks better. Now, if you didn't do it, say you didn't think it was going to be a problem or you forgot or whatever, and then you painted it white and the bleed through comes through, don't worry. Just stop, let it dry, and come back and boss it and put another coat of paint on top. You can do it, you know, it's better to do it in the beginning, but if you did it and then you run into a problem down the road, you can come back and fix it with a layer of boss and another layer of paint and it will be fine. So don't think like, oh, I didn't boss it. It's going to be a problem down the road. It's fixable. So, is everybody still with me? <laughs> if you have any questions, let me know. So we talked about sanding. We talked about cleaning. We talked about the boss. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, so this chair, we also sand it. It has flowers painted on it. And I think the boss would have covered the flowers and so you wouldn't have seen them come through the white paint. But you would have seen the outline of them because the flowers were on top of the wood. So again, I said close your eyes and rub your hands over it. If there's any sort of, you know, like design painted on it, if you can feel that design with your hand, you're going to see the design coming through your paint. Even if the paint covers all the colors, you, you're still going to see that edge. So if there was like an old stencil on it or something, there's just a tiny little bit of difference in height there. And that needs to get sanded off to give you that smooth surface, that clean slate, the blank canvas to, to build your, your paint on top of. So that's why we sand it. Um, this part of the chair. We didn't say the entire chair. You, you bossed the chair, didn't you, Mom? Yeah. So the whole thing has been bossed because, again, you can see how it's gotten a little discolored just through the years. And that's typical. That's what wood does. Um, you can do everything you can to prevent it right now with our prep work, but, you know, I can't guarantee that 50 years from now it's not going to be like that because wood. This is what we do. Is correct, Daddy? Yes. <laughs> so we're gonna do everything in our power, everything in our bag of tricks to prevent it from happening for as long as possible. Um, and it's gonna look really good. So that's cleaning, that's sanding, that's bossing. And again, we don't boss it. You know, some if you're using latex paint, you need to prime it to get the paint to stick. The Dixie Bell paint is going to stick to wood, wooden furniture. That's what it's designed to do. Latex paint is designed to stick to walls, which are like the drywall material, totally different material. Um, but we do the boss to prevent any of the tannins in the wood from showing through, to prevent like any of the old finish that's been disturbed from coming through, um, and to block any stains or odors that might be present in the wood. So that's the boss, and then you're ready to paint. So when it's talking about getting started, like what tools do you need to get started? Um, I think the sander is a good tool to have in your bag of tricks. Um, paint brushes. There's a lot of options with paint brushes. You can get a cheapy little $2 chip brush. It'll work, but you gotta work harder at it. And I've done a lot of videos on this, and I have an ebook where I can talk all about this. If you want to um, download our free ebook, it's on our website, allthingsnewagain.net. It's six secrets professional furniture painters know and I share like really good tips on how to get a smooth finish even with a cheap chip brush or you can upgrade it this is the Dixie Bell premium chip brush and you, can see, you can see how it's just thicker and lusher you don't get like the spreading of the bristles as quickly because there's more bristles there and it just this, this will lay down your paint really nicely or you can upgrade even more um, to a synthetic brush and um, this is called the mini angle. It's mini because the handle is short. I like that. It feels good in my hand. Some people prefer a longer handle, personal preference. 
and it's got like this angle to it, which I find really helpful on pieces like this, kind of getting up in the edges and getting in all the little cracks and crevices. Um, so this is a nice brush to use. It costs a little more than the natural bristle brushes, but it's worth it um, in that it lays down your paint and gives you a really smooth finish. So again, do you need one of these to get started? No. But if you're going to be painting a lot of furniture, I think it's worth the investment. We do sell them here at the shop, and um, again, you can get them online. You go to our website, allthingsnewagain.net, and you can click the Dixie Bell there. Um, the final things you need, so you need your paint, you need your brush, and you need a little bit of water. You can use a little spray bottle from the dollar store, which we use for years. That'll get you started. Or you can upgrade and get one of these um, continuous mist bottles. I'll show you the difference. Stand back, Patty. I don't want to... So this one kind of squirts everywhere, and this is a finer mist. I don't know if you can see that on this. It's a finer mist, and um, it, the squirt bottle, you have to be careful with the paint dripping where it goes where you don't want it. With the continuous mister, it's a lighter spray, so it gives you just enough um, water so that your paint moves more smoothly, but um, it doesn't like drip as much. So again, not a deal breaker, but this is better. Good, better, if that makes sense. Um, and then, as you paint, I just put a bit of paint on, and I spray a little bit of water, and what that does is it smooths out your paint, and it helps it just to flow better. Um, it doesn't dilute the color, it doesn't like affect the adhesion, it just helps lay down any brush marks you may have and give you a really smooth finish. So. Um, that would be my recommendation. Um, if you're just getting started painting, you know, get a good brush. And we resisted that for years, but it, it, I think it really does make a difference. And, and, and get a spray bottle with water. And just using that water helps smooth out and give you a really nice fit. So those are, that's kind of the basics. It's kind of everything you need to know to get started. And it's a lot. And some pieces take more prep work than others, but it's worth it give you that that blank canvas to then make it beautiful again. I'm excited to get started on this to see it transform. We're going to paint it the fluff. Um, it's going to be a, like a bright white, really fresh and clean and modern looking. She bought beautiful new fabric for the chair seat. Um, it's got a little like, turquoise blue design through it. And this is going to be just lovely. So we're excited to start start the fun part today, which is the actual transformation, actually getting paint on the piece. But I mean, it, it took like a day of prepping to get to that point. And, and that's the part you don't want to skimp on because your end product is only going to be as good as the prep work you put into it. Um, even with all these new things on the market, they're wonderful. They, you know, it's not as much work as it used to be to strip it down, to strip it down to bare wood and prime it and do all these things. But some pieces need a little more prep work than that. And, um, I'm hope, I hope this video kind of helped walk you through that process and answer any questions you have to help you make good decisions on your piece. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to ask them here. I'll be happy to answer them. And I just want to give you a couple more resources. Um, again, if you want to download our free ebook, it's on our website, allthingsnewagain.net. It's six secrets professional furniture painters know but don't always tell you. And it um, gives you lots of little tips for getting started. Um, I invite you also to join our All Things New Again Artisans group here on Facebook. I, um, I usually do my tutorials there. And we just, it's a nice community of painters of all skill levels. So if you're like, I haven't started yet, I can't join, I'm not an artisan, you can. Welcome, and uh, we'd love to have you. Um, and we answer all kinds of questions. And it's just a fun place to share ideas and to share projects. And again, that's the All Things New Again Artisans group where I usually do my tutorials here on Facebook. And um, our website, allthingsnewagain.net, we've got a blog with lots of information on there as well. And we're always happy to answer your questions. We want your projects to look amazing. So you know, you're proud to have them in your house. And when your friends come over, you can be like, I painted that. <laughs> and, um, and if you have any questions or need help with that, we're happy to help you. So thank you for watching our video. If you wouldn't mind just clicking that share button real quick and sharing it with your friends. That helps us out a lot. And if you are in Northern Virginia or Metro DC, we invite you to come on down to All Things New Again. We're in Leesburg. We're open Fridays and Saturdays, 10 to 5. But 
I think today's Monday. <laughs> All the days run together. <laughs> if, if, if you're up here and you see our car out front on another day, come on in. Um, we're happy to see you. And um, have a great day, everybody. See you later.